D-Man and I, uh, we needed a bye week last week after getting beat up uh, through the first five weeks. So week five, D-Man, you were 2-1-1 one, one, uh, against the spread, 7-12-1 overall. I was 2-2, two and two, so 9-11 uh, and 11 overall. Let's begin uh, with the Browns and Broncos tonight. How do you see this playing out? Who you like, who you got? Dave, I kind of like the bye week because it allowed me to rest on my 2-1-1. One, and one. <laughs> <laughs> A much needed uh, over 500 week. But uh, I, I like the Browns and I don't like the Browns, meaning I'm nervous about them. I don't see how they're going to win because they have so many injuries. But I like them enough to think that they're going to win and I, therefore I'll pick them. I'll, I'll take the Browns minus uh, the one and a half. I guess the bottom line for me is I can't even imagine this team going into their mini buy at three and four. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about the house falling down, the sky falling. If the Browns go are three and four, it's just going to be mind blowing to me. That's so by hook or by crook, they'll figure out a way. I am. Um, I as well will go with the Browns minus one and a half. I, I think the defense plays a lot more like they did against the Texans and the Bears than they did against the Chargers and uh, the Cardinals. Having said that, I am concerned about Noah Fant and I am concerned about Cortland Sutton. Sutton's a, a big target and, and gives me flashbacks of Mike Williams uh, with Chargers. Uh, but I think the defense does, in fact, get after uh, Teddy Bridgewater, and I think they may create some turnovers. It's the big thing that's been lacking from this defense. They have not created turnovers. Maybe some of the blown coverage goes from them trying to create turnovers where there wasn't a play to create turnovers. We'll see. Uh, but I'm going with the Browns. I'm with you on that. All right. As we move on, um, we got a couple of that we disagree with. So let's go uh, the other AFC North game that um, we're both picking. Bengals at the Ravens. Ravens, uh, six and a half point favorites. Who you got there? Uh, I'm taking the Ravens here. I know they've had some scares along the way to five and one, so it's not like they've been invincible. They should have lost uh, realistically to the to the bad Lions in uh, in Ford Field in Detroit among uh, their close calls. Um, but I'm really impressed by what I've seen lately. They're at home. Uh, Lamar Jackson is on fire. Yes, the Bengals come in at four and two. Yes, Joe Burrow has done some good things, but I can't get out of my head. The only other time Joe Burrow has played in Baltimore, because he's, he's only a second year quarterback, he did play in Baltimore before he got injured last year. And he was abysmal. He was terrible. And the uh, Ravens made him look bad. So I, I think it's possible that the Ravens, until proven otherwise, have Burrow's number. Therefore, I say the Ravens uh, minus the points. I'm going to go with the Bengals taking the points. And, and the thought I have behind this is, um, you know, the Bengals, it's a much bigger game to the Bengals for them to try to prove who they are than it is the Ravens. Uh, I think the Ravens might look a little past the Bengals in this one. I still think the Ravens are going to win. I don't think they're going to cover. I think it's going to be um, an exciting game. I, I'm, I am a big believer in the young, skilled position players for the Bengals. I think there are a lot of problems and are going to be a lot of problems for everybody, including the Browns. So I'm going to go with the Bengals. I'm going to take the six and a half. Um, another one that we differ on, uh, Eagles plus three at the Raiders. Who you got in this one, D-Man? Uh, I think the Eagles um... – I wish I, I would wish I were getting more from Brian, producer extraordinaire. <laughs> I want more than three. I'd like three and a half, four, four and a half. Um, but I don't know. I, I really don't know why it is that I have this soft spot for the Eagles. Maybe it's because I follow a lot of their, for whatever reason, I follow a lot of their analysts on Twitter. Um, but the Eagles are never, in my mind, as bad as they show on a given week. <laughs> so, And the Raiders are coming off of a, a well-done you know, performance in uh, Denver. So I could see where 
people would be bullish on the Raiders, including, I'm pretty sure, you in a few seconds, Dave. But I'll take the Eagles here with the points. As I said, I wish I were getting at least a half a point more. I uh, yeah, I'm, I, I like the Raiders in this. I, I like I like what I've seen from Derek Carr. I, I like Jacobs, um, although he's been a little banged up. Kenyon Drake is a guy that can be a problem out of the backfield, and uh, they haven't really had a big game from Waller. I think uh, Darren Waller reappears and kind of creates a lot of problems uh, for that Eagles defense. Uh, I like I do like the Raiders minus three. All right, um, Jets at the Patriots is uh, the one that you're going with. Patriots at home, favored by seven over the Jets. I mean, even if the Patriots had not played pretty darn well overall against the Dallas Cowboys in the previous week, and a thrilling uh, game went to overtime, uh, Cowboys won it. I get that the Patriots D gave up a ton to the Dallas Cowboys, but guess what? And the Cowboys are almost a video game offense these days. So there's no shame, although Belichick would say there is, there's no shame in giving up a lot of yards and a lot of points to this iteration of the Cowboys. The Jets coming in right after the Dallas Cowboys is going to feel like you've gone from, you know, a calculus four-hour exam to second-grade math. And they're going to – the Patriots defenders are going to be like, man, this is a party. So I think the Patriots will dominate from start to finish. All right, fair enough. The the last one I'm going with, I am going with the Panthers minus three at the Giants. I think the Giants are just too beat up. Um, I think Sam Darnold finally gets uh, gets things rolling offensively. I know McCaffrey probably isn't going to play. That's usually not a good thing for the Panthers. Uh, DJ Moore, um, I think gets gets a has a big game. Um, I just think I like the Panthers. I think the Panthers get it done against the Giants. Uh, D man, uh, we will see how we. Uh, Head to head with two here that, uh, and we don't look at our picks together, so we, we disagree on two. So uh, a big chance for you to like make a move and, and catch me or even overtake or me. Or for you to bury me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, the D man, Dennis Maniloff, as always, man. Appreciate the time and the insight. Make sure you listen to him, WTAM 1100 News Radio, as well as 106.9 FM. D man, as always, appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Thank you, Dave.